So, Mog World. I've not seen a lot of discussion around this book, so I figured I would throw out a review for it. That being said, Mog World is a fantasy story about an undead mage in a World of Warcraft inspired fantasy world, and is written by Yahtzee Crawshaw. A British guy who I think has lived outside the UK for far longer than he was ever in it, but keeps the accent presumably to let you know that he's smarter than you. Hey everyone, let's all be PC gamers. Let's all talk on Skype and change our desktop wallpapers. I don't know what it is about that accent. Okay, go ahead! You're no doubt aware of his other more popular work online, Zero Punctuation, in which he reviews video games in such a way, runs into the CinemaSins problem of it being difficult to discern if it's his actual opinion or not. Then use the money you saved to make a low-budget platformer on the side. I don't know if that was a joke or you're being serious, but Insomniac Games did that, and you shit on them for it. Put your eye on the developer. Yes, it's Insomniac Games. Ratchet and Clank, Resistance, Sunset Bloody Overdrive. What's a AAA developer doing making 2D small child scary world games? But the crux of this is that he's cultivated an online persona of being somewhat cynical and difficult to please. Which couldn't be more different from myself, who's cautiously optimistic about most things and considers running water to be the height of privilege. Still, He's funny. And help the people of London get back to their natural state of football violence and faintly smug attitudes. I bring this up because I feel you need to understand the author somewhat to understand what I'll be saying about this book. Yahtzee wears his inspiration on a soldier. And to that end, I've not really read much Discworld, and this already reminds me of Discworld. There's an artificiality to it with a focus on the mundane. For example, it comes up very early on that Jeff has just stopped working about 20 years ago. And if you die, you just get resurrected at a nearby church. This leads the local Dark Lord, his name is Dreadgrave for how little that matters, to have a fairly affable relationship with the local peasant. Under the logic of, yeah, the raids got us out of the house, it was good exercise and the like. This combined with our first introduction to the aforementioned Dark Lord being basically a union dispute, leads to the whole setting having this kind of casual feeling. Which works mostly, except, except when the characters reference something that I don't think their background would suggest they know anything about. I thought it was just the head! Not in bitterness translation! He theorized that the throat was cut, but the body was intact! I've never even seen you read a magazine! Tell me this, how does a second year magic student who is established to be really poor going to understand the behavior of monkeys in a zoo? The answer is poo flinging monkeys is a funny image, so Yahtzee chooses to use that over a metaphor more relevant to the character's background. Which, I guess, leads us into the characters. The main character of this book is an undead mage named Jim. And other than his name, he basically feels like Yahtzee's self-insert. There's a common theme in Yahtzee's work where the main character is from a place, he doesn't like that place, and he thinks anyone who stayed in that place is an idiot. Yeah, Yahtzee doesn't really strike me as someone who is fond of... The Land of the Rose? I thought that was Bulgaria. <laughs> Which isn't necessarily a criticism, but, but I'll get into that later. Jim's main quest in this world is to find a way to kill himself. That will actually take. He's undead, you see, and unlike everyone else, he can't be resurrected into a new body and has to stay in his old one. Jim is accompanied by two other undead, Meryl, a spunky, upbeat redhead who does very little beyond being spunky, upbeat, and nationalistic, and an undead priest who's so one note, I can't even recall his name. I can tell you he was a member of the Seventh Day Advent Devolutionist, but that's about it. His shtick is that he's always judging the other two for being undead, but is undead himself. Comedy ensues from that. Then there's the living characters, of which the only important ones are really Slippery John, a rogue who's constantly the butt of jokes about his stupidity, but it's pretty apparent about halfway clear that it's obfuscating stupidity, and Barry, a living priest who's out to destroy Jim, Merrill, and... Give me a second, this is going to bother me. Thaddeus, that undead priest whose name I forgot. Barry exists mostly to roast religion, Yahtzee not being the pious type. He serves as the main antagonist of the story and kind of feels forced into the plot at times. I mean, he literally just sort of picks Jim out of a crowd and says, You and I are enemies now. 
To that end, the plot can be kind of messy overall. I remember pretty clearly what happened at the beginning and the end, but for the life of me, I can't recall what happened to the middle bit where all the plot was actually happening. I can't recall any major plot holes or anything, and there's a revelation later on that would make that kind of thing irrelevant, so I guess there's that. The themes of self-determination or suicide are handled with the subtlety of an anime showing it takes place in America. or are basically non-existent. The characters do grow and change a bit, but not in any way that will shatter your expectations, as it were. Did you guess that the undead priest finally accepts he's just as undead as the other two by the end? Because you don't get any points for that. So, the characters are kind of weak, the plot is pretty forgettable, and the story and themes aren't doing the book any favors. So, why would I say I recommend this book? Well, it's funny. Remember how I said Jim was kind of a self-insert? Far from being a problem, that's the book's main strength. This is Yahtzee as an NPC in World of Warcraft, snarking about the world, setting, and gameplay of World of Warcraft. And like I said, I think Yahtzee's a funny dude. Though, if you don't like Yahtzee for whatever reason, maybe you're a Smash Bros fan, this book won't change your mind. So, would you enjoy this book? I don't know, watch a few Zero Punctuation episodes, and if you want more Yahtzee, it's worth a listen. Yeah, I wouldn't read this one. It's a far better experience on audiobook, as Yahtzee is the one actually reading it, and I think his delivery makes the experience a bit better overall.